Now, I have put myself in the role of waking up the sheeple. And unfortunately, it means that I've got to do some things and say some things that makes me, in the long run, the bad guy. And I know a lot of you don't like it and you don't like me for that very reason. But I'm going to continue to do it simply because there's nobody else out there who will do it. And it must be done. We can't regain our freedom. We can't restore the republic. We can't put the Constitution back in its rightful, legal and lawful place as the supreme law of the land. If we're running around bumping into trees, bumping into each other, scared of every little shadow, passing rumors back and forth, jumping up and down every time you hear some little tale from somebody, we have to pay attention to the real enemy, to the real task that lies before us. We cannot, under any circumstances, be goaded into any kind of stupidity, our stupid confrontation, our answering some alert sent out by somebody in some place somewhere because some of their people got themselves in trouble. When my family and I were guests down in Phoenix, I didn't call up the militia. I called for some militia members to come down and witness what was happening so that I could survive the court battle. I didn't send out a mission, militia alerts across the country, nor did anyone else in my behalf. And I handled my own legal problem myself in my own way with my own money. I did not beg you for legal defense funds. I kept my eye on the sparrow, ladies and gentlemen, and that's exactly where you'd better put yours. A militia, by definition, is to protect the nation and the state. If you are a state militia, your first obligation is to your state constitution and to your state, to your communities, to your counties. The militia of Michigan has no obligation to the militia of Arizona unless the nation finds itself in war to fight a battle to protect the Constitution and the Bill of Rights of the United States of America. You all need to understand these things because you don't seem to understand much at all. Until that happens... You have no obligation anywhere but in your local community, in your state, to your state constitution. If and when another Waco occurs, or someone attempts another Waco, then we must all come together to stop it. But until then, we don't march because Joe Blow, having nothing to do with the militia whatsoever, goes with some friends and gets himself arrested for whatever reason. You don't do that. And you don't run around like chickens with your head cut off because it's a rumor that somebody's going to come after you this weekend. You don't do that. The militia, by definition, must be ready to respond at any time to any emergency. You don't go home and watch television and wait for the next rumor and then run around scared that something's going to happen. You must be prepared all the time, every moment, every day, every week, every month, every year, if you are a member of the militia, to respond if you are called upon. You must always protect your leadership. If all of you out there really believe that something's going to happen this weekend, there's a very easy way to make sure that nothing does happen. 
It's very simple. Go somewhere else. When they come for you, what they think you're going to be, just don't be there. And you don't discuss your weaknesses and your fears or your strengths on radio. Every time someone attempts that on this broadcast, you see me cut them off. And so you flock to all the other radio stations so that you can talk about how scared you are and how weak your militia is or how strong your militia is or what your plans are. And you are stupid. Stupid. Keep it up. You will ensure that if there ever is a confrontation, you will be defeated soundly very quickly. Not because the enemy is strong. Not because the enemy is smart. Not because the enemy is any better. But simply because you're stupid and you're acting stupid. Recently, in the militia of Michigan, one of the best, strongest militias in this country, there was a meeting where some contingency plans were discussed, and whether or not what was said was planned was planned, I have no idea. But a militia officer went out and began talking about it. He should have gone to his commanding officers, and there should have been a hearing called an investigation by the command staff, and it should have been dealt with quietly within the command staff and not on radio all over the nation as it was. Everyone concerned should be busted from their rank and new leadership should be installed. If the militia is going to be successful, the militia had better learn discipline. You had better learn that you do not ever make a public statement on behalf of the militia or about the militia without the consent and permission of the highest commanding officer in the militia. No public statements should ever be made except by a public relations officer who specializes in public relations and communicates every release and gets permission for every release from the commanding officer of the militia. You people are headed for a fall, most of you. I keep getting calls. Can I be a member of the Cotton of the Second Continental Army of the Republic. No, you cannot. Membership is by invitation only, except in the Intelligence Corps, which I am the director of, and I determine who can be a member and who cannot be, and under what terms, and what job they do. You don't hear all this stuff from the Second Continental Army of the Republic. You don't hear rumors about the Second Continental Army of the Republic. You don't hear people on the radio speaking for the Second Continental Army of the Republic. You don't hear leaks from the Second Continental Army of the Republic. And you never will. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I suggest that those of you who are not guilty of any of this, get with those who are and teach them how to grow up. Teach them to take off their diapers and put on a pair of pants. Teach them to function as adults and not children. We're not playing cowboys and Indians here. And sooner or later, all this stupidity is going to cause people to lose their lives. Whoever fires the first shot loses the war. And there are many people out there trying to instigate you into doing exactly that. When the militia of Montana called for all of the militias of all of the states to march to New Mexico because Catron County was overrun with the National Guard and the FBI and the BATF and the citizens were being rounded up and put in a concentration camp, if you had done it, it would have been all over. And every patriot in this country would now be in jail. You better understand it. You better start thinking straight. It is imperative for the future of not only your state, but the nation 
for the future of liberty that you learn to be responsible. When I went to speak in Michigan, here it was, a Constitution Party rally, and all these guys kept showing up in camouflage fatigues, even to the little garrison cap, and field jackets, and jack boots. It wasn't a militia meeting. These guys were playing games. They were feeding their egos. It made them feel good. Those are the wrong people to have in the militia. You see, if dressing up like a soldier makes you feel really big, and if it puffs up your ego, you shouldn't be there. If carrying a gun makes you feel bigger or more important, then you should never be allowed to carry a gun, in my estimation. But since I believe in the second article and amendment, I would be the last to stop you. But I happen to know something about human nature. A lot of you are playing games out there. You're feeding your egos. You're substituting for your sexual inadequacies and your lack of personality or character or whatever it is. You're trying to make up for your sense of insecurity. And that's not going to get it. We need strong, self-reliant, confident men and women in the militias. Men and women who will answer the call when it is necessary. Who will train and be prepared and be ready. Who will keep their mouths shut. Militias who will not get on the radio and talk about their inner squabbles or whatever is happening. And you must hold your people accountable. And if they will not act responsible, and if they will not maintain discipline, you must bust them in rank as a warning. If that doesn't work, you must oust them from your military unit. And it's not called paramilitary. Get rid of that word. The militia is military. You must oust them. Militia members should never wear any kind of a uniform unless they are participating in a training activity which requires it. If you're going to be on television and meet the press, you should wear a suit and tie. You should know the law. You should know the history of the militia. You should talk about those things and not how many Soviet tanks are in the United States, which makes you look like a blooming idiot, even though we know there are. And if you're the leader of a militia, don't take somebody else to speak for you. If you can't speak, don't go. If you can't speak, you've got no business leading. And cut out all this religious crap. The militia is a military organization, not a church. Good night, my children, and God bless you all.